the, on the beach, you know? <laughs> I like it. Nobody is. Nobody cares. cares. Nobody like, knows this there are lots of different ways to live, and one of them is out of a van, and I want to show you a little bit of the reality of van life, tech problems being one of them, as the microphone port went out in my camera. Welcome to my channel, my name is Victoria Rose, today I'm going to show you the ins and outs of how to live in a van. Tech issues aren't going to stop us from exploring and figuring out just how easy, or hard, van life is along the coast of Portugal. Today I'm going to show you the very basics of how to actually do things and live from a van. It's not the same lifestyle as living in a building. How do you shower? How do you use onboard facilities? How do you cook? And we'll even get down to how you empty the toilet. Because in reality, it's not a highlight reel. If you're considering van life, you should know how to go about doing things in a whole new way. I got this camper van from Siesta Campers in Lisbon, and we drove it to the coast without a plan. After learning to drive such a big vehicle, the next mission was to get in some beach time and cold plunges into the ocean. I highly recommend jumping into cold water for a full body reset. I just cannot stand having any hair in my armpits. I'm going to show you how to shower in the actual van, but a lot of the times you want to get clean in alternative ways to save water, like outdoor showers. Oh, I wish I could do a little yoga. Somewhere. This is cute. It's lovely. There's some potholes here. It's fine. Don't worry. Stress. Yeah. Slow and steady. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. House. That is an adorable little house. A huge part of van life is finding suitable places to be able to park overnight. It looks kind of nice. I mean, what we could vehicles? always do like just here. I wonder if right here would be louder, have, a, have a look. Maybe it's like. Another aspect you have to consider is how messy your van will get every day, and you have to constantly clean as you trail on a lot of sand and dirt from outside. You also have to stay really organized in such a small space. This is our third morning of doing our cold plunge. We're going into the restricted area this time. This beach is super crowded, but we're going to just bear and uh, do it anyways. We'll try and find quiet. We'll spot. try and find somewhere where there's no people. It's all gorgeous. Covering more than 850 kilometers, Portugal has some of the most beautiful beaches and some of the biggest waves that I've seen. You call me that. Life in a van is great for getting in a lot of outdoor time and in turn exercise. You can always sign up for a gym if you can get a national gym pass to shower, work out, and be around other humans. But you can also upkeep your fitness through lots of hikes, swimming, and outdoor playgrounds or gyms to work on your mobility, which is very important. Cooking is pretty self-explanatory. You have hot heat and you cook things on it just like at home. When the dawn of simplicity comes in life, complications leave. I like that. I'm gonna demonstrate how you shower in here since I've already showed you how we showered at the beach. But showering in an RV is a whole different experience and we only wanna do this like once because we're trying to conserve water. So um, I haven't showered in here yet, but we're going to do that right now. So this is a bit of a tight squeeze in here. This, which doubles as the sink as well. The thing that you always have to remember whenever you're doing RV life or you're doing van life or stop dripping on me, um, is that you have very limited resources. It's not a normal home. So you have to conserve as much as possible. I don't even need a warm shower, but we turned on the heat. And I'll, just, I'll show you how the toilet works too, because we're in the bathroom. But this is the toilet. We have been using the toilet. We, we said we're only gonna use that for emergencies, but it's just so much more convenient than trying to go outside. <laughs> so it is almost halfway full. <laughs> this is the non-glamorous things that you have to think about with these types of things because people don't need to think about these things when you're living in a normal home. Push this to fill it with water after you've used it, or a little bit before, and then you pull this lever. I'm not going to show you the state of the tank, but then it just like goes down to the toilet. 
that's the toilet process pretty easy the hard part is is that we have to manually empty it ourselves which i will also have to show you because it's almost full so this is the sink and then you put it up and it goes the shower this one has a full bathroom in it which i have which is very fancy for a camper van usually you're not going to have this in a camper van It just, you realize how much you pee and go to the bathroom whenever you see it all and know you have to empty it later. So I take the shower gel and the armpits are just wherever. You can even get your hands a little bit wet so it sets up. And then you don't even need to use much water for this. So wherever you want to put the shower gel. Get my nose wet and shave first, like get it sensed. I'm gonna take shampoo that I stole, that I took from a hotel. I like to collect these because they're like little bottles and they're travel cells. And then I just put it in my hair like that. And I set the... So now we're showering. Let's play, let's play. And it's as easy as that. I'm going to shower. And that's how you shower. So another thing about living in a van, usually, even in a nice fancy van like this, sometimes you do have to pee outside if your tank gets full, if you don't want to dirty your tank anymore, whatever. And in a normal van, without a bathroom, you still need to pee outside. So, the key is to find a good pee spot. We're gonna do the dishes now and I'll show you guys. Open up this, and uh, this is the sink. And usually when we do dishes, we don't really bother about hot or cold water. Um, I also don't even like to use the water. You can ask Layla. I'm very, I'm very strict about water usage because it runs out really fast. But like, in this what case, in, the <laughs> in this case, I'm just gonna. I'll show you the technique that I use. So I put in a little bit and a little bit of. Soap. The key is to do as much as you can with the least amount of water, and then put the soapy water in the other dishes because you want to make sure that you're safe and all. This is a lot of water. Usually like having a sink, having water and stuff like that for me is a luxury because as you guys know, in my Jeep, I didn't have those things. Very non-glamorous, but this is what is done. Another tip for fan life is or vehicle life or RV life is you have to empty your stuff. So here we're at this station, it's free service, which is so nice. Um, we get water to fill up our water tank. We have a thing here to empty our black water, which black water means pee and poop water. And it's in a cassette in here that we take out and literally, and then we have to like kind of clean it out. I've never actually done this. When I did RV life, the person I was with did it. I always love learning new things, even if the things aren't always pretty and I believe I can do most things so I like to give everything a go. Emptying the cassette is easier than we thought and together we were able to remember how to do it after examining it like a couple of monkeys first. You slide the cassette out, empty the contents into the toilet, flush it down, rinse out the inside, then afterwards you need to put in some blue liquid in order to keep it from smelling and just keep it all fresh. That was how we did so that? much easier than I thought. Yeah I was scared about that one. Next area of business is the gray water which is basically shower water, dish water, kind of um, that type of water, and there's just a valve under here, and there's a drain right here that it goes into, so we're gonna Yeah, move the wet. She's having a pee. She's having a wee. She's having a big wee. <laughs> These areas to empty are not always easy to find or free, so we were lucky to be able to find this one 20 minutes away. I'd say Portugal has proven really great for van life. We don't actually have a hose, <laughs> so this place is like a lot more complicated. Like, give it a tilt. Like a small tilt, but not too much. Like, put it in and then up. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, see, right? Yeah. It's all filling. She knows what she's talking about. Yeah.
clean your feet. I am clean. <laughs> so another main thing about van life is that you always have to be clean your feet. It's always going to be, this floor is always going to be dirty. Um, it's just a constant thing that you don't think about in your day to day. But yeah, also when you're by the sand, sand everywhere. So whenever you're going to sleep in a van, there's a couple things that you need to remember to do. Mainly, you know, open or shut the windows, um, lock the doors. Uh, put covers in the windows to make sure that you maybe turn your fridge off like we've turned our fridge off Take all the sand off your bed. So I'm going to show you how we do our nighttime routine but Put a screen down so no mosquitoes get in. So this one has blackout uh, blinds Which is really great to block out the light because otherwise it's really hard to sleep this I mean during the night we will have to pee and since we've emptied our toilet We don't want to refill it. So we've been peeing outside So we'll have to unlock it during the night when we need to pee and it's, it's really cool peeing beside the ocean, to be honest. This is where the locking is. You just lock it. And it's conveniently by your head so you remember. Something like that. So we put these on the windows and they have little suction cups on them. So I brush my teeth in here real fast and I'm actually going to get a shower tonight, which is crazy. Also, I had to move the van because it was on a tilt. Um, earlier or last night and I couldn't sleep very well because you don't want to park on like any type of tilt so you have to like even the van out. Ow. You okay? <laughs> yes. Also you bump yourself a lot while being in a van. <laughs> I could show how I crawl over you whenever okay. I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> nimbly. <laughs> it's not that nimble. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, I wake up I wake every time. up every time. But then I turn my fan on at night because I need that. And I put it beside the window so I have a nice breeze. Then we have to turn the lights off. So I forgot to do that over there. <laughs> and then I have to get up again and be like, damn it, I forgot to turn the lights off. Wait. No, oh, there we go. But I turn that light that off. One line. So then I have to get up and go over her again. <laughs> and then remember, oh, I have to pee as well. So then, <laughs> so then I go it out. Takes a lot longer. Let me show you how blustery it gets outside. <laughs> Right beside the ocean, so it's it's like a it's a really cool adventure going pee out there because <laughs> you feel like a like a lost princess. That is van life at nighttime, and I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. <laughs>that's the basics of how to live in a van and i hope you learned something or at least found it interesting it's now time to take the journey back to lisbon and then back to england for a brand new adventure portugal has been absolutely amazing from the sea to the castles the sweet pastries the people the nature and the van life experience in general i highly recommend portugal for visiting and if you need a van hit up siesta campers i hope you'll leave a like and subscribe if you like adventure content with cool vehicles and in cool places for now, stay extraterrestrial, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye!